morning everyone. My name is Alyssa Cooper and this is Cooking in Quarantine. So this morning I'm making a lovely beet avocado carrot salad with edamame and slivered uh, almonds. And so I've got the quinoa already cooking over here. And I've got the dressing here started in a jar. And good morning, Denise. I'm going to go over here and carefully roll my new baby right over here where I can finish up a few things. And good morning, Carolyn, where I can finish a few things while the quinoa is on. You've, I've mentioned this before. Um, there's a company called Love Beats that makes these little ready-to-eat beets. It's a game changer because, as you know, peeling beets and cooking beets is, can be kind of a tiresome chore. So I love these little guys. So here's what's going today. I, I even am using an actual recipe that I pulled off the internet. So this, the, the uh, salad is quinoa, edamame, almonds, beets, carrots, over arugula or spinach and with avocado and then there's a cider vinegar lime juice um, Dijon dressing over here that we'll talk about a little more as we go to finish it but right now I have my quinoa on which will take about 15 minutes to cook so now that that's down to a simmer I'm going to try to let that stay there I can't remember if I rinsed my greens earlier so I'm just going to give them a little rinse here before I chop them up. Aww. So this dressing calls for uh, two tablespoons, I'm sorry, a tablespoon of fresh cilantro or fresh mint. So I've got a little of both here since I had a little of both in them. And I'm just going to kind of roll this up so that I can get a hold of it and start to chop this. So it's another glorious day here in New York. Um, I had a strange night in that I fell asleep sitting up, woke up at like three in the morning, started reading, tried not to read, then ended up finally going back to sleep about, I don't know, six o'clock maybe, 4.30 to, I don't remember, 4.30 to seven or something like that. But those, you know, middle of the night nights are always a weird, make for weird days I think so I although I've read a really interesting thing maybe in Smithsonian or uh, saw an NPR that for really up until the modern era meaning the the light that people slept in two shifts that they would come home from work at the end of the day hello Denise and um, have something to eat and immediately sort of fall asleep as soon as the as soon as it was dark and if you live in the northern hemisphere very far north you know it can be dark at three o'clock in the afternoon in the winter time so um that people would have that first sleep and then get up about midnight or one o'clock and walk down the street and have a cup of tea with their neighbors. I kind of like that idea of middle of the night stuff, but you know, some people are not middle of the night people. Um, but I think that's just because of decades and generations of us changing our way of being, right? So I'm gonna put this, and I'm maybe being a little, I've been very precise measuring out everything so far. So this is uh, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Um, two tablespoons of lime juice, two tablespoons of olive oil, a tablespoon of fresh mint or cilantro, and as I said, I've mixed them together, uh, two tablespoons of honey, maple syrup, or agave. I am using maple syrup because I'm trying to be conscientious about making things vegan more often because you may not know, but I do uh, some work for a company called Vegan Wines, and so I try to be conscientious about that and make when I'm bringing a new recipe in, if I can make that little tiny step that makes it go from vegetarian to vegan, then it's so much easier to entertain my vegan friends here at home. Um, so two tablespoons of maple syrup, uh, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and freshly ground black pepper. Now that that's all put together, I'm going to give this a shake, shake, shake. It's 
very satisfying, the shaking. There we go, so that's lovely. Now we could probably start doing some things like building the middle things. This has only been in about six minutes, so I don't wanna bother that right now. Um, here we go. The great thing about um, quinoa is that it is gluten-free, so if you have friends who have celiac or are any kind of autoimmune disease that doesn't react well to, um, to gluten, it's a great option. And tons of protein as grains go. So let's see, an avocado. I love to check out the avocados. Here we go, how's this one gonna look today? Almost perfect, fantastic. So I'm gonna have to probably bring up a little water to boil just to knock the last of the freeze off of my frozen edamame. I usually buy the edamame at uh, Trader Joe's that are in the little package and already cooked because then I just put a little tamari on them and eat them like candy. Like literally, I'm like a child. I can't be, I can't control myself and I eat way too many of them, but they're really good for you, right? So anyway, I'm just gonna bring some water up to boil here so that I can pour them over my edamame just long enough to knock the, the last little bit of freezer off of them. I should have taken them out of the freezer last night, but uh, you know, what you gonna do? Hello, cuz, how you doing? How's life out there in KY? Um, I think we've got pretty much a room full of KY here today. So that's wonderful. So when we put this salad together, let's see what it says to us. Mm, cook the quinoa, blah, 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 blah. We'll set it aside to cool. So that seems like this won't be something that I'll completely finish today uh, in front of you because I don't think this will come from 212 degrees back down to cool enough to not do terrible damage to my other things. Uh, then it says cook the edamame, but my edamame is already cooked, so all I have to do is unfreeze it. Uh, toast the almonds or pepitas if you want, but you know how I am the kind of person who likes to burn the nuts. I bought already toasted, unsalted slivered almonds. As my friend Kelly pointed out when she was making granola on Monday, don't try to sliver your own almonds. That is a fool's errand. The, um, they did say that if you have a spiralizer, that you might want to spiralize your carrots and your beets. I don't spiralize. So, um, and let's see. And then that's all good. So yeah, so what we're gonna do basically is just, it's kind of a dump, right? We're gonna dump all these things together. And I have my pretty bowl here that I think was Mamma Liebers, if I'm not mistaken. I think I got it, um, I don't remember where I got it, but I think it was Mamma Liebers. Um, I sometimes conflate the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The provenance of items in my home. Um, one large carrot, it said. One medium beet, it said. Um, we're going to get these edamame ready in just a second. As soon as these are warm. Um, and I think actually what I'm going to do is just put the edamame here in the this. So where I had to rinse off, you know, you always rinse quinoa. And so I had this out for that, so that's good here. And this is not gonna take, I'm not even gonna, they've sort of begun to thaw. So I'm just gonna pour this over this. And just as soon, oops, a little on the sink, that's always good. Keep it clean, keep it clean. Did I turn the wrong thing off? Yes, I did. Okay, sorry, there we go. Now, and now I'm gonna run some cold water over it, so that they don't cook or soften up or get mushy or anything. There we go. Excellent. And now those can probably drain a second. Can you? Thank you. I'm so glad you love my little island. It's so sweet. And I'm sure by now everybody knows that it folds down to about two feet and six inches. So it could ostensibly I think there's maybe a secret little place that I could stow it here but I like it so much I've been leaving it up because I can get it over here in the corner just enough to still be able to get the bottle of wine in and out of the refrigerator and isn't that all you really need the refrigerator for after you've already cooked for the day right all right so these 
The little guys are pretty dry here, so I'm going to dump them in. I love edamame. Like I said, when I buy the little boxes of them already cooked and uh, in Trader Joe's, I just, I eat them like this with soy sauce, and I eat them like this. I'm a crazy person in that way. So here our salad dressing is ready to go. I'm not going to put the nuts on yet because I feel like that they'll lose their crunchy if I let them do too much. Mmm. Avocado. We can cut the avocado up. So it does ask for cubes, so I will cube. I'm going to try to follow the instructions. I'm going to see how bad that little, oh, not too bad. Done. Cubes. Cubes. Rectangles. They're basically rectangles. One of these days somebody's going to see me take my hand off. There was the day that I found myself teaching a wine class, cut not through the baguette, but through my thumb, and just kept on teaching. So, you know, it's that old theater adage, the show must go on. And so, even if you cut your hands off, you gotta keep going, right? I once was playing in a Gilbert and Sullivan at the, uh, uh, at the, Opera House in Lexington, and I learned the lesson the hard way that when you are wearing an obi for a costume, wear underwear because if you fall down, everybody will know you're not wearing underwear. That was a particular low point, or shall we say, high learning point for me. Um, you can go commando, but not on stage. Ah, oh, here we go, getting the avocado in here. This is gonna be a really nice little salad. Okay, here we go. Mm -mm -mm. Nice, now, because I've pulled this avocado out, I am gonna go ahead and get, a, oh, if it were a snake, I'm gonna open this up. Hello, Sale, hello, Kelly. Um, I am going to get a little of this dressing drizzled onto my avocado because I, of course, don't want the avocados to brown. And there's probably no good reason to not let some of these bits and pieces start marinating anyway. Oh, yeah, I'm going to like this. This is going to be good. Excellent. So here we are. Let's see how the quinoa is coming. It's right at 15 minutes. Here we go. <gasps> Looky loo, looks like. Ah, uh, here we go. Mm. All right, I got it just at the right moment before I completely burned it up. Oh, well, oh my. Hmm, I wonder if that toasty burn smell is gonna be on it. Well, guys, you know, I make mistakes every day. So I'm going to put this away into the refrigerator where it can begin to melt because I'm not putting this in my thing. How funny, like literally seconds, it, it went from being fine to being burned. So there we go. So I'm gonna have to make some more quinoa after I scrub my pan clean or maybe put, in a he put it in a heavier bottomed pan and I will make some more quinoa, but I think that this will be delicious when it's all done. Um, and I don't think that there's anything, all my ingredients are in except that I burned the quinoa. But that's what I get because I really need, I, I think I ordered myself an, uh, a kitchen timer just the other day that I think is magnetic and will sit right here. So hopefully moving forward I will learn to be a better and more conscientious cook and pay attention to myself. So sorry for the wasted quinoa, but I think this is going to be a delicious little salad. So let's see how good this is with the dressing. Mmm. Oh, Mama Mia, that is really good. That is really, really good. And speaking of which, yesterday the little pasta I made with my mint chimichurri slash tricked out into pesto was over the moon. The corn, absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend you all make some mint pesto at home and turn that into pasta salad. It was fantastic. And Kelly, yes, please feel free to call. I will share the recipe with all y'all. Um, yes, colorful beet salad, carrot, quinoa, 
and spinach, but I have a, it says spinach or arugula. So if, after all of this is put together, we're gonna serve it over a bed of arugula, um, tossed all together with the dressing and the quinoa. So guys, I better get to cooking my quinoa because holy cow, I'm now behind the eight ball. But you know what? It's Friday and it's, holy cow, it's Memorial Day weekend. Who in the world thought when we started that, well, I kind of did, that we'd still be here. Um, so, uh, oh, cook and bake. Kelly, I think that's a great idea. As a matter of fact, we could Zoom it and we could do it together simultaneously. Um, and I've already gotten the URL cooking after quarantine. So uh, my plan is to keep on doing this as long as you guys can come and look at it. So anybody out there who hasn't gone to YouTube and tried to find me on YouTube, uh, please do sign up, follow me, subscribe to my channel. Um, I, you can find me sometimes, it, you have to be careful if you don't spell my name correctly, then you will go down a nightmare whole of Alyssa's with Y's and A's and two S's and three E's and good Lord Almighty. So if you spell my name correctly, you're, you're ahead of the game. And so go there and if you've got a, a device that can just play those 50 some odd videos I currently have up, can you believe that? I know for a fact that I've at least lost two to not saving onto my phone after this is over. It's a Facebook way, I think, of stealing your intellectual property, uh, making you go through an extra step to save your own video to your own device. So I know I've lost at least two that I can think of, um, and I've missed a couple of days. So that's, and I didn't start this until at least week two of quarantine, so 50 days. And I haven't done Sundays, right? A couple of the last few weeks. So guys, that really is absolutely proof positive that we all have gone through a long ordeal 50 days that's a long time so um, what I would say is more than ever take this day to have a really really great day I saw this morning the governor said that this is day 86 of the crisis so I guess we're counting back probably to like what January 12th or something um, but if you think about the fact that we called quarantine March 18, I believe, here in New York, and it's already many, many, many days past May 18. So, guys, we're well into month three. I'm looking forward to the 12th of June. Uh, Hugo has already made us a hotel reservation at the Hotel Hugo which is just down the block, just something to mix it up. A night of sleeping away in somebody else's bed where somebody else brings your food. I am so looking forward to that. So I guess that that's what I'm doing for me today because I've given myself something to look forward to. So you guys do something for yourselves. Give yourself something to look forward to. Go book a room, go find your favorite, find your favorite restaurant and see if they're doing take out lunches or kind of, I know some places are doing blue apron style stuff where they'll give you the meat and the potatoes and the recipes and all you need and you just go, they put it in your trunk and off you drive. I know they're doing prepared meals at Holly Hill for you guys who are in Kentucky, probably one of the five best restaurants in the whole state. So go buy some food from Weta if, you're, if her restaurants aren't open, if you don't feel comfortable eating in public if your state hasn't addressed the issues of dining properly. But I did see that in Kentucky, they said um, families can dine together indoors and non-families can dine outdoors. And yes, darling, the minute Hugo is finishing his project tonight and tomorrow, fingers crossed, pray to God it's real and unreal that it goes, goes down. Um, and so hopefully, my Sunday night dinner will be pastis. <laughs> I'm so excited. And for those of you who don't know what pastis is, pastis is the place where in Sex and the City, when the girls would be sitting on the sidewalk having brunch, that's pastis. So it went away because they lost their lease when construction, meatpacking district, gentrification, blah, blah, blah. So they lost their lease, but they literally took the original apart, 
tile by tile. And when they got to the new place, they put it back into place tile by tile. So it's literally the same restaurant, just in a new location. So um, I guess that you've, you're probably getting from this that I'm looking forward to eating somebody's food other than my own. How exciting. And maybe with somebody other than my own company. So you guys, do it. Do what's right. Do what's right. Wear your mask. If anybody tells you that they feel put upon for wearing their mask, remind them that they have to wear shirts and shoes and it's no damn different. If they tell you that they've got to get the economy going, tell them that there is no economy if there's a million dead people by September. So guys, do the right thing. Be generous. That's all I ever ask of anybody is do the generous thing. And you can always show generosity of spirit. Sorry, can't get the telephone to stop telephoning me. So anyway, hopefully by next week, I'll have the new device here and we won't have those telephone call interruptions anymore. So you guys, go take care. Do a plank, walk around the block, be good to your fellow man, and remember, it's not control, it's self-sacrifice because you love other people. I read a great article yesterday about that very thing, talking about why it is that generally uh, conservative, politically conservative people are driven by fear, whereas politically uh, liberal people are not. And that this seems like that there's been a reversal, that 88% of uh, Democrats and liberals are being 100% compliant with all the stay-at-home orders and the mask wearing and blah, 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 blah. And it turns out that it's not that we are driven by fear. It's that we are driven by the love of our fellow man. So when you wear a mask, you're not being an idiot who doesn't believe in civil rights. You're being a dear, kind person who realizes that when you trample on anyone's rights, you've trampled on your own. So wear your mask, be a good person. Right, they're gonna open the churches. What's the fucking point of opening the churches if you're just gonna be an asshole? Pardon my language pardon my language. So that's it, guys. I've got to go and start scrubbing this pot because I've burned so much quinoa. Let's see if it tastes burnt. Hmm. Actually, it doesn't. I might, I might be able to salvage enough to get by. So let's see what I can do. Thank you guys for coming by, as always. Julie, Kevin, I love every one of you. I hope you're taking care. Have a great day.